Thank Quite you, right. Steve. <laughs> the latest now in our special reports looking back at D-Day and the part the Midlands played in the greatest seaborne assault in history. Although we're miles from the French beaches where Allied troops landed, there are still many reminders in the region of that momentous day 60 years ago. Yes, and Nick's been to visit two very different places which had key roles to play back in June 1944. on that and they made literally thousands of them in a matter of weeks. At RAF Shawbury in Shropshire, old memories of a technological feat that seems no less amazing today. Wooden horser gliders carried thousands of troops and their vehicles into battle. You would not believe the sight. 60 gliders lying astern in two huge columns, tow ropes attached, ready to go. As I was going into land, I got my flaps on all that, another glider landed on top of me, and there was a big bang in front of me. This glider that had hit me, landed on top of me, came down in front of me, and as he was levelling off to land, his tail came up. The glider restoration at Shawbury will last for generations, but one of our region's least known D-Day relics is also one of our largest. Thousands of motorists travel along this busy road in and out of Lempster and Herefordshire every day, but most of them have no idea that behind the trees is a fascinating and very important relic of D-Day. Uh, this was built as a, a hospital for the American Army. It was built by British contractors uh, in 1942. The local story is, is that this was uh, the head wounds hospital for the American Army. Um, and uh, the reason for that replacement here was because it was in a quiet rural area. And all this was really with D-Day in mind? Absolutely, yeah, that's what its purpose was. So it's quite nice that Lemster's got uh, this reminder of the, of the Second World War. Technology, organisation, in Herefordshire, in Shropshire. Two very different examples of how the Midlands helped make a difference on D-Day. <laughs> 